Get the latest Zacks research, analysis, and rankings on exchange-traded funds in Exploring ETFs. Hey, there's a new type of fund that's just gotten into the ETF space, and our ETF strategist, Eric Dutram, has all the details about it. He's here with me now. So go ahead. Let's just start right in. All right. Well, it's a new type of product coming out. It's, uh, it's from Eaton Vance, and it's called NextShares, and they're calling it an exchange-traded mutual fund. What? And uh, Well, the, uh, the difference here is that... Uh, it's one of the first types of products that's going to be traded on a daily basis, but you're not going to have to have the daily disclosure requirement. So in other words, the holdings aren't going to have to be broadcast every single day. Uh, this is going to be a pretty big deal because a lot of active managers are really going to like this style. And uh, actually, shares of Eaton Vance were up 20% the other day after this report came out. So investors clearly believe this is going to be a big thing for the market. And actually, a couple of other companies in the ETF world tried to get this structure approved by the SEC. And they failed. So Eden Vance could have a little bit of a monopoly here in this space for a while. So it could be a, a pretty big deal. So this kind of shakes things up a bit in this ETF space, doesn't it? Definitely. Um, so it's going to impact the ETF world in a number of ways, specifically with those active managers that I was talking about. Uh, a lot of managers out there are very worried that they're going to get front run uh, and that they're not going to be able to build up positions in various holdings and that, you know, let's say they're going to buy a giant holding in Google or any company like that, you know, they can't just buy it all at once. They're going to have to kind of scale into it. So that's going to be broadcast, and other investors, maybe you or I, could kind of jump in on those moves. But if the holdings are only updated once a quarter, like we see in the mutual fund world right now, mm -hmm. it's going to be very difficult to do that. But, but still, we, uh, we do see some ETFs out there right now that, that don't seem to be too worried about this daily disclosure requirement. And there's actually, uh, you know, several dozen ETFs in, right now that have active, active management strategies, and they actually broadcast their holdings on a daily basis. So these could be some, some great options for investors, at least until this new structure gets, gets some actual funds going in it. All right. I have to ask. I'm, I'm sorry. I know we didn't have a chance to talk about this before we started rolling here. But from the investor's perspective, is this a good thing? I, you know, I think it is because... Uh, it's basically going to be mutual funds, right. but in an ETF form. So it's going to be more tax efficient. We're probably going to see lower fees. And if anything, mutual funds are just going to take their existing products and then repackage them in an ETF structure. So you're just going to get more tradability and probably better tax efficiency. Granted, it's not going to be great. Uh, it's not going to be a perfect fit for everyone. But if you're kind of a long-term investor looking for more active strategies in the ETF world, I think this could be a very promising thing down the line. All right. Well, you've brought three examples with you, the first one being a commodity fund. That's right. Uh, we've got FTGC. It's a first trust commodity ETF. And it, it holds about uh, between 10 and 35 different commodities on a, on a regular basis. It uses various factors to kind of pinpoint uh, commodities to hold. It tries to have a lower risk profile than, than most out there. Right now, it's diversified across all the major groups. So you've got agriculture, precious metals, base metals. Uh, currently, soybeans, uh, Brent crude, and copper are the top three holdings. Each one of these has about 10% of the portfolio. So if you're looking, if you're always a little uncertain about the, uh, the commodity space, and you kind of want a broad play that uses active management techniques, this could be a very interesting fund to look into. All right, then you have a bond ETF, right? That's right, HYLD. This is uh, from Advisor Shares. Uh, this fund, it, it focuses on the high yield space, but uh, it, doesn't, it doesn't focus on the brand new bonds. It focuses on ones that have actually been out in the market for a little bit. They believe there's better values out there, so it could be a choice if you, if you want some active management in this space. Moderate risk profile. Not going to get very short duration, not very long duration, so interest rate risk won't be as high as other ones. And it's got a pretty great yield, 9.7% and 30-day SEC yield terms. So you're going to kind of blowing away a lot of treasury bonds and, uh, you know, regular, regular corporate securities out there. Okay, and finally, an equity fund. Right. This is one of the very few equity active ETFs out there, WBIL. It's a large cap focused product. Uh, it stretches across international holdings as well, so you're going to have a very diversified group of, of stocks in this portfolio. Use a quantitative fundamental info to evaluate stocks, so you know, looking at various ratios, information like that. But it also uses technical analysis to you know, try and pinpoint companies that have momentum and other various factors. And unlike a lot of equity products, it can actually go into short-term bonds when things get a little hairy. So it could be a very low-risk play, and you know, it's going to be one of the few actively managed equity funds out there. 
at least until that new structure that we were just talking about comes out on the market. Okay, own any? I do not. All right, well that's what our friends in the ETF department of Zacks does. They keep their finger on the pulse of what's going on in the ETF space for you. And then they bring you that information in these videos that we do every week. And what we don't talk about in these videos, they write about in the ETF section of Zacks.com. All of that information can be linked to in that ETF section right off the home page. With Eric, I'm Terry Ruffalo.